Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about a very recent discovery of the first ever really really large planet orbiting around a really really small star, a typical white dwarf. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So once upon a time, our sun is going to look sort of like this. It's going to be still um, not really that small in terms of mass. It's going to lose a little bit of mass, but not a lot. But it's going to be Earth-sized, and it's also going to be extremely, extremely bright. It's going to be what's known as a white dwarf. This will happen in um, a few billion years from now, possibly about 6 billion years. And by then, the um, planet Earth will probably no longer exist. Mostly because before this stage, our Sun is going to expand dramatically and very likely swallow, or at least seriously, scorch our beautiful planet. So, in that sense, it's not going to be a very exciting time for any life on Earth, but it's still quite exciting to find out new things about these unusual remnants. So, White Dwarf is basically a kind of a final stage for many different stars similar to our Sun, and it's going to stay in this stage for a tremendously long time. As a matter of fact, um, even though it doesn't actually have any nuclear reaction anymore, the White Dwarf itself cools down extremely slow. At some point, and we can actually demonstrate this, by using Universe Sandbox, um, it's going to start cooling down and will eventually reach a point when it's going to become what's known as a Black Dwarf. But because all of the uh, calculations we have today suggest that this takes trillions and trillions of years, um, we don't think these exist yet, because our universe is just not old enough. But anyway, so that is the natural of what White Dwarfs are. There's quite a lot of them around, and the nearest one to us is known as Sirius B. But at a distance of about 1500 light years away from us is this white dwarf with a peculiar name that you can find right here and about uh, which you can read more in the description below. So essentially this white dwarf is pretty far away from us, and just like many other white dwarfs, seems to possess this right here, a kind of a accretion disk, or basically disk of matter around it. We've discovered various disks and various rings around white dwarfs, and we usually think that they're formed by, well, remember how I mentioned planet Earth is going to suffer when our sun expands? That. They're usually created by the destructive forces, tidal forces, from the expanding red giant stars. And we think that many of these planets eventually start coming closer and closer to a white dwarf that they used to orbit around. So basically this right here, Sirius B, um, will or already has created a bunch of rings or um, accretion disks around itself. In essence, we expect all of the white dwarfs to have very similar sort of structure and very similar um, evolution. But at the same time, we always discover something we never really expected, and this is exactly what just happened. When looking for the um, types of material that was orbiting around various white dwarfs out there, and specifically approximately 7,000 of them, the scientists behind the study discovered that one of them was somewhat peculiar, because it seemed to have a lot more material around this particular white dwarf, and even though we expect the actual solar winds to blow it all out and have it disappear over time, it didn't seem to happen in this case. Or actually, that's not entirely true. A lot of gas did leave the system, but a lot of it seemed to have also been falling into the star. Specifically, about 3000 tons of material of oxygen, sulfur, and hydrogen was still falling into the white dwarf and just for fun, we can try to simulate this using Universe Sandbox by having our planet fall into the White Dwarf and suddenly it expands. It shouldn't really do that. It should still stay the same size. But anyway, let's try to create a slightly more realistic representation of all of this. And basically, so here you have the White Dwarf with the accretion disk around it and a lot of the material falls into it, but a lot of it also dissipates um, throughout the system. And the only reasonable explanation that uh, the scientists were able to find is that there has to be a planet here. A planet very similar to Neptune and Uranus, with an orbit that took it around the White Dwarf every 10 days or so. And this planet was essentially being slowly destroyed by the White Dwarf 
and more specifically by the extreme radiation coming from the uh, center here. The temperature of this white dwarf is roughly around 28,000 degrees Celsius and because of this the um, Neptune here would very likely receive tremendously powerful amounts of UV radiation that would strip its atmosphere very slowly but very methodically and eventually it's probably going to come even closer to the actual center of the system and then turn into a ring itself. And interestingly, the planet itself is larger than the star in terms of size, but obviously not in terms of mass. But it is slowly shrinking and growing smaller and smaller every single year. And because all of this mass will eventually make it into the star itself, it's also probably very likely that we're going to see some major emissions at some point in the future. And until this discovery, we have never actually seen planets around white dwarfs. We didn't really think that most would survive. So this is the first ever proof that planets can and do survive these extremely hostile conditions. And one of the reasons it's important is because, like I mentioned before, this is technically the future of the solar system. Our solar system might one day look like this. And this could be one of the gas giants or ice giants that kind of do the same in our own solar system. So we're sort of looking into the future, the very distant future of the sun and all of the planets in our solar system. In some sense, finding more planets here would be really interesting and it seems that there might be another planet here simply because of where this object is located. There is currently no explanation for how it got so close to the star except for maybe through interaction with other planets. In other words, by having another planet in the system we could then explain how the orbit changed so much. Here, a planetary interaction would eventually cause the orbit of one of the planets to come close enough to the star and be in the location where it is today. So, in other words, by discovering a planet so close to the white dwarf, we kind of found proof that there might be other planets here. And by the way, in terms of distances from the star, this right here is roughly around 10 million kilometers or 1 15th of a distance of Earth to the Sun. So it is uh, not that far, but also not that close either. And so as you can see here in this uh, simple simulation, one of my planets did end up having a slightly closer orbit. And through um, years and years of interacting, they will eventually change their orbits completely. And discovering systems like this is kind of important for us because we do want to understand what's going to eventually happen to the sun. Is our sun going to be able to, for example, uh, support planets and potentially support um, other types of life that might evolve in the future in the next few billion years? Or is our sun going to be completely inhospitable to life because it's just going to have too much UV radiation? And so by looking at objects like this and by trying to discover more of similar systems, we'll one day be able to answer the question of how habitable our system will be. And although this particular event that's going to happen in a few billion years doesn't immediately affect us, it's not something we should be worrying anytime soon, it is nevertheless interesting to know this in case we are one of those species that do survive for those billions of years. I mean, you never know, right? So this is something we need to understand. Anyway, on that note, check out the paper from the University of Warwick in the description below and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and subscribe if you still haven't. And anyway, on this note, as our Earth is about to be absorbed by the super giant red giant sun, that's it. Thank you for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. Wow, that was a pretty dark note to end this on. I started with destroying Earth, and I ended with another destruction of Earth. Huh, I need to work on my presentation.